Happy New Year and welcome to the eighth episode of Boulder Community Health's Be Well Saturdays. I'm Gina Simmering, your host, and to kick off the new year, we've decided to focus on something we all love, food. Who doesn't like to eat, right? I love to eat. So in today's episode, we've paired three of our community partners with local chefs to create some simple, nutritious recipes. And as an added bonus, we will take a sneak peek inside Dr. Nelson Trujillo's kitchen to learn how he creates his favorite heart healthy breakfast. And be sure to stay with us until the end for the opportunity to win $50 gift cards to our featured restaurants and to natural grocers. So let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Be Well Saturday. I'm Nelson Trujillo. I'm an interventional cardiologist working here in Boulder for the last 25 years and happy to be with you here today to talk about food as medicine. So I strongly believe that food is medicine. And when we look around the world at all the different cultures and all the different ways that people live a healthy life, one of the things that we, we learn as a common denominator is that most cultures that live a long and healthy life have a diet that's made up of real foods, plant-based, with a little bit of animal proteins. And in these days, that's mostly fish. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the garbanzo bean. It's part of our January challenge, what to do with chickpeas. And I thought I'd share with you a, a breakfast crepe that I think is quite tasty. Um, the recipe comes, and actually it's two forms of it. Uh, we're gonna use chickpeas in two ways. So just to, to prep you and we'll get you these recipes, I wanna show, um, I've already made um, some chickpea curry here. Um, these are chickpeas, I use canned chickpeas. I don't have time to boil them or make them myself, but you can. Um, so I use a can of chickpeas. Um, I use lots of great spices. Um, this uh, recipe includes uh, paprika and some ginger. And we also use cayenne pepper, just a touch for a little bit of spice and a little garam masala. Um, these beans took about 20 minutes to make and I store them in a glass container uh, for the whole week. So I've already put them in my little pot here and they're heating so when we make our breakfast crepe we're just going to scoop them right out of there. The other kind of uh, uh, chickpeas that I just love are what we call um, uh, baked chickpeas. This is what they look like when they're done. Um, and so I'm going to show you how we do that. So um, the, the chickpeas come out of the can like this. Um, I've taken these chickpeas and I've drained all the water out of them. I've washed them and I've let them dry. And what we're going to do is take all those spices I mentioned, and here they are all set to go. And we're going to throw them in a big, big bowl, which I love. I'm going to throw those spices in there straight away. I got my handy dandy whisk here. We're going to whisk all those spices together. We love olive oil, all that good Mediterranean goodness. So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil into our mix here straight away. A little splash there. That'll make that just perfect. And then we're going to just throw our chickpeas right in that big bowl. And using a spoon, we're going to stir that stuff up so they get all coated straight away. While we're doing this, we've got the oven heating up to about 400 degrees, so we'll be able to pop these babies right in there and bake them after they're all nice and covered. What we're going to do is put them on a baking pan. We're just going to pop these babies in the oven at 400 degrees. And so I like pita bread. So you can get this whole wheat or regular flour. This is a pita bread. You can also use naan. There are lots of uh, very uh, nice uh, breads that we use. Um, I usually cut this right in half straight away. And then I pop it in the microwave for about 15 seconds, which makes it nice and warm. It gives us a nice little pocket there. Um, and so once our beans are ready, we can stuff it in here and then put fixings in there. The other thing I like to do when it's a little bit fancier is I like to make crepes. So I have my special nonstick crepe pan here. And um, again, I make the batter uh, usually early in the week and I can store it. Here it's been stored all week. It's a mixture of flour and we can use uh, whole wheat flour. Um, I like to make my uh, crepe mix vegan. So I use a little olive oil with that, a little cornstarch and a little bit of sugar and, that, uh, and water. Um, and a little bit of almond milk and it makes a really nice batter. It's kind of sweet. Um, we use about a third of a cup for the crepe, so I'm just going to pop this right in here for us. 
and we spread that around our pan to make a nice light crepe for us here. And we're going to let that set uh, while everything is getting ready. While my crepe is setting and I'm getting ready, I get my fixing ready. Now I already did this for us. I like cucumber, so I've sliced up some cucumber for us and some fresh carrots. So this is what we're going to use to, uh, to sort of offset the savoriness of our beans, the sweetness of our crepes with a little bit of vegetables in there as well. And then, of course, we have to have sauce. I mean, what kind of recipe is not good without sauce? You know, I think Julia Child taught us that, you know, that's the way to go. And so I like to use a little Greek yogurt. So we're going to use a little plain Greek yogurt to accent this. Now, um, sometimes when I'm really feeling frisky, I might add a little garlic to my yogurt. It makes like a, um, a tzatziki sauce, and I might add cucumber. Today, just because we're running short on time, we're just going to use a little bit of plain yogurt. So let's put together. I've got some beans that have already come out of the oven. Here we have our uh, chickpeas. I'm going to open this up, and I'm just going to take a spoonful of my chickpeas, put it right in there for us. I'm going to put in some fixins. We're going to put in a couple of little carrots here, straight up top, a little bit of cucumber, and we'll put a big dollop of yogurt right on top. Here we go. We've got a teaspoonful. And we are ready to go. All set to go. So while we've been talking, our crepe has been cooking. You can see it's starting to bubble, which means it's ready to flip. Here we go. Whoop! Got to flip there. We're going to let that keep heating up there a little bit while we're waiting. All right, so our crepe is all set here. And we're going to use some of our curry beans right here. So we'll take a couple scoops of that, put them right on top. Add a little bit of our yogurt right on top. I think we're going to leave this one straight, savory, maybe a little cucumber, what the heck. And of course, no nope, crepe is complete without just a little bit of powdered sugar. So we'll just put a little sprinkle of powdered sugar there. And we are set to go. I'm Jessica Emick, owner of Shine Restaurant in Boulder and Shine Potions as well. And I am the executive chef as well as I have my master's in holistic nutrition. So I bring those two things together to create delicious food at our restaurant, Shine. Hi, my name is David Ford. I serve as the recreation coordinator with the City of Boulder's Open Space and Mountain Parks. And so I lead a lot of our wellness programming and I really like to encourage people to think about their experiences out when they're outdoors. It's not just that A to B typical recreation hike, but that idea of how can we be outside for that philosophy of recreation. Heading out on the trails, a lot of times we think about our general intakes. We take in a good hike, a run, sometimes sunshine, a relaxing view. Today we've got a great recipe involving chickpeas and a good food that you can take out on the trail with you. Today we're going to be making chickpea energy bars. I really love using the ingredient of chickpeas because they're nutrient dense. They're really high in protein, they're tasty, and they're actually really high in prebiotics, which is really good for our digestion, for our guts, it's very healing. First, we're going to grease our pan with um, the coconut oil. And then we're gonna add all of our ingredients to this Cuisinart here. So we're gonna add our chickpeas, a full can, and our almond butter. It's really important to use creamy almond butter as opposed to the chunky one. It helps it be nice and smooth. So then we're adding our baking soda and baking powder. And then we're going to blend it up. And then we're going to take all of these mixed ingredients and add it to our bowl. Next we're going to add our chocolate chips and mix it up. And then we're going to add it to our pan. And next, we're going to just sprinkle on the rest of our chocolate chips, that last tablespoon. 
and then we're going to add it to our 350 degree oven. Right when it comes out of the oven, I like to sprinkle it with a little bit of coarse sea salt just to bring up the sweetness with a little bit of saltiness. It's delicious. So now we have our chickpea energy bars. So this eight by eight pan cuts into nine pieces. So you can see how nice and moist it is. This has been a lot of fun making this recipe. I think we should get outside and enjoy these. Let's go. All right, let's do it. A lot of what we've been discussing today has been about healthy intakes. And I hope that it's another source of motivation to get us outside and enjoying these beautiful open spaces that we have. And every time that you buy local ingredients, you're actually supporting these open spaces um, with the city of Boulder's open space and mountain parks. And so I hope that we all get outside and enjoy. Absolutely. And I think it's so good that we're learning how to take in foods that are healthy for our bodies and taste really good. Because what we eat, what we eat literally becomes us. So it really matters to bring in the right food, to energize and help us feel good in the body and the mind. Yeah. Awesome, cool. We've really enjoyed this day and the kind of a healthy snack to take out on the trail. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you. My name is Kate Kulik Daring. I'm a fitness and mind body program coordinator with the City of Boulder Parks and Rec Department. As a fitness professional, I'm looking for recipes and foods that are nutritious and protein filled that support an active lifestyle. As a new mom, I'm looking for those recipes to also be simple, easy to prepare, and family friendly. So I partnered with Mateo of Mateo Restaurant in Boulder to come up with some recipes that fit that bill. We use chickpeas, so they're more versatile. If people eat meat or don't eat meat, chickpea is a great way to get that protein that supports an active lifestyle. So two options, family friendly and easy to prepare. So if I can do it, you can do it. My name is Matthew with Matea Restaurant. And uh, I'm delighted that you're here today. There is so much versatility in these two dishes. So I am gluten and dairy free personally, and so you can add cheese to the salad, you don't have to. You can enjoy the puree with a crostini, you could use a gluten free. You can vary them so much depending on what your particular eating style is, and also again, seasonally. So, so much variability um, can pretty much please any eating style, and that's, you know, that's, that's what we're aiming for. The puree is amazing, um, again, something that I never would have thought to make um, on my own. And then the salad that has some key ingredients but can be rotated seasonally and accented with whatever is currently in season. So simple, five ingredients or less and 10 minutes or less to prepare a few steps. And I mean, that's what's key in my life right now, um, again, as a mom and someone who's on the go um, consistently. So thank you so much. I'm, I can't wait to make these at home.
my name is Diane Strasberg. I'm the nutritional health coach at the Boulder Natural Grocers. And today I'm here with Christine Rook at the Fresh Time Marketplace. And we're going to show you some recipes with chickpea flour. Hi, my name is Christine and I'm the chef and owner of Fresh Times Eatery and Fresh Times Marketplace in Boulder. Um, I have a long background in food and health. Um, I was the garden facilitator and the culinary director for the Garden to Table program for a number of years. And I was the chef and culinary instructor and ran the culinary department at Bowman College, which is a school for holistic nutrition and culinary arts um, based out of California and in Colorado as well. Chickpeas are one of my favorite legumes to use, and I really love it when you can use a legume in a different way. And one of my favorite ways to use chickpeas is using chickpea flour. And it's quite a tradition in the Mediterranean to make a batter with chickpea. And in the Mediterranean, it's called soca, and it is uh, just a mixture of olive oil, water, and chickpea flour with a little bit of salt. And you can make this batter, and it should be about the texture and the consistency of cake batter or pancake batter, something like that. You can keep this in your refrigerator and use it for all different purposes, and I'm going to show you today how to use it in two different ways. At the restaurant, we have a following for something called our rosemary uh, chickpea flatbread. And so what all I've done is taken this batter and poured it into a hot cast iron skillet and baked it, and then it becomes this beautiful um, little bread. Some people like to call it cornbread. It looks like cornbread, but it's not. Um, and then this is really lovely because you can use it in, um, in my house we use it as a pizza, like a deep dish pizza. And you can either pile toppings on top of here, you can put cheese on here, you can use a little dipping sauce, things like that. So this just goes into a hot oven for about 12 minutes and then you have this wonderful um, bread. The next thing I want to show you that you can also do with this batter is you can make fritters. And so today what I wanted to show you how to do is make a fritter and I'm going to use some seasonal ingredients and use leeks and use um, red um, chard, Swiss chard. And so I all I've done is just sliced up some red uh, Swiss chard and then I took all of these uh, stems and some leeks and I just sauteed it a little bit just to soften it. So I'm gonna just blend all these together. I think one of the most important things is starting with all of your ingredients in the bowl and then adding the batter. You don't wanna do it the opposite way because then you could end up with like this funky conglomeration. Um, where you don't have enough batter, you have too much batter, and so it's far easier to control this by adding the batter to your ingredients. You can use anything. You can use sweet potatoes, you can use less leftover vegetables, you can use peppers, onions, mushrooms. Um, in the summer, I love to use zucchini and make zucchini fritters. Um, and so, but today I'm gonna go a little seasonal and a little holiday um, by adding the chard. Um, so all I did is add these vegetables to the bowl and I'm going to add some of the batter and I'm just adding just enough batter to combine all of the ingredients and because all you really want the batter to do is hold all the ingredients together. I'm going to turn on the temperature. I have this little skillet heating up here. Cast iron is really the best thing to use um, as opposed to a non-stick skillet um, which can contain some harmful uh, chemicals. The other thing that I really like about legumes in general and chickpeas in particular is really high in fiber. And everybody's always telling you to get more fiber into your diet. And fiber is really, really good for your microbiome. And it is considered a food for your microbiome and it produces short chain fatty acids, which um, boosts your immune system. Here we have our batter. You can see that it's not really wet, it's just enough to hold together all of our chard and stems and our leeks. And then I'm going to use coconut oil for this. So as Christine noted, she likes using coconut oil in her frying and she also used olive oil in her bread because these oils are healthy for us. Um, the saturated fat from coconut oil protects it from overheating and burning so it maintains its integrity. It's also a really good source of fuel for our cells. Um, it's 
sometimes people are scared of saturated fat, but saturated fat can be very protective also of those vulnerable fats that come from olive oil, which are omega-9s, as well as those healthy omega-3 fats that we are all trying to always increase the amounts in, that we consume. And so consuming healthy fats is a really important part of healthy cooking, which is why Christine and I decided it was a really good idea to include that in our recipe today. Hi everyone, I'm back. I'm gonna show you what to do with this fritter batter. So I've just added just enough batter to bring all of these ingredients together, and I'm gonna drop little tiny spoonfuls into um, a hot skillet. I'm gonna adjust this temperature just a little bit. And we're just gonna cook them until they're golden brown and cooked all the way through. And you'll notice this is a lot like making pancakes or waffles at home, except it just has some good nutrition built into it. And then while these cook, I'm gonna make you guys a yogurt dipping sauce to go with it. So I suggest that you get um, any sort of plain, whole fat uh, yogurt. You can use Greek yogurt, sheep yogurt, um, regular cow yogurt, but I think the most important part is this full fat. And a lot like Diane's talking about, fat is actually very good for you if you're using the right kind of fat to support your health. So all I did is just add a little bit of um, yogurt to this, and then I'm just going to zhuzh up that yogurt and have it taste delicious. So I added a little bit of chopped mint, and I'm going to add um, some chopped scallions. And I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to just make it a little bit more acidic. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic in here. And one of my favorite ways to chop garlic, as fresh garlic is always so much more nutritious, and is to use a microplane. And then you can just do this and then that way you don't have to worry about chopping up your garlic and all of that kind of stuff. And then this uh, microplane just makes your garlic perfect. And then we're gonna blend all of this together. And then this is lovely. This is kind of the base of like tzatziki. You could add dill, you could add any herb that you have in your refrigerator. Um, you could add parsley, you could add cilantro. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil just to bring it all together. And then I'm going to turn these fritters. And they're almost done. Um, so once again, here is our soca, our uh, chickpea flatbread, and our um, fritters. Uh, these are our Swiss chard and leek fritters with our yogurt sauce. And one of the things that I love to do with both of these things is you can also put them in the refrigerator. They're great for breakfast, they're great for an afternoon snack, and they're also wonderful to go alongside your dinner. And I know so many people are always trying to eat healthy, and they're on a limited budget, or they're on limited time, and they need some extra help. And part of it is shopping at Vitamin Cottage where someone like Diane can walk you through all of the ingredients you need to improve health. But also coming to the marketplace. We have a team of dedicated people here who are really knowledgeable about health and wellness and nutrition. And we make a lot of items that um, help shortcut your dinner prep. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We hope that you feel inspired to try some new recipes. And now for the opportunity to win a $50 gift card to Natural Grocers, be the first person to send me an email with the correct answer to this question, and you're the winner. My email address is listed below. Here goes. What single ingredient was the theme of each one of the recipes created in today's episode. Send me your answer. And that's not all, there are more ways to win. So during the entire month of January, we challenge you to recreate one of the recipes you saw in today's episode, or create your own simple healthy recipe that includes the chickpea, snap a photo, 
Tag us on either Facebook or Instagram at Boulder Community Health, and February 1st, we will announce the winner. Winners will receive a $50 gift card to either Fresh Times, Mateo, or Shine Restaurant in Boulder. Until next time, everyone, stay healthy and be well. Restaurants are the heart and soul of our communities and the backbone of our local and regional economies. As we all rally to support our local restaurant industry during this time, please note that many restaurants are open for takeout and patio dining. Other ways to show support are by purchasing gift cards, marketplace food products, cookbooks, and visiting restaurant websites for more information on all of their offerings. Special thanks to our amazing chefs from Fresh Times, Shine, and Mateo restaurants for taking the time to share some of their healthy recipes with our community.